Hi, my name's Steve and welcome to the Seaside Allotment Channel and today I've got some good news about water. Now, anybody who's a regular viewer on my channel knows that we're kind of water challenged here in that although we have tap water supply, it's only on for a certain amount of time, normally from the sort of mid to the end of April uh, until about the end of September, something like that. And because I grow year round, I need quite a lot of water for that period, that other six months of the year, basically. Um, and it's always been a bit of a challenge because there's only so much water that I can capture and store close to the polytunnel, which is the biggest capture area on my plot, and the shed, which is the biggest capture area on Jenny's plot, and same on Debbie's plot. Um, and just recently I had a visit from Bosch um, Garden Tools um, Division, and they came to talk about water management on allotment sites. And we had a great chat for a couple of hours uh, where we went through all the, the different challenges around automated watering systems in polytunnels, uh, around how to capture water, how to move water around the plot, uh, and generally the sort of challenges that people have on allotments with water management. And one of the things that they had uh, is a great little rechargeable uh, or battery powered pump that uses a rechargeable battery. Um, and they, they gifted me one of these pumps at the end of the um, discussion and I've just been trying it out today and I am so pleased with it. Um, and basically it's allowing me to move water to storage containers on the plot that aren't close to the polytunnel or the shed or whatever, which is really great because as I said, we're limited in the amount of water that we can capture in those areas. Plus, the flow rate on it is so good that you can actually water with a hose, you know, just drop, your, drop the pump into uh, an IBC tank and you can just water with a hose from there. So it means that, again, it's incredibly flexible uh, in terms of where you can site the IBC tanks, basically, you know, anywhere that a hose can reach, uh, you can put them. And you can also move things around between tanks. So if you want to clean a tank, you can move water from one tank to another and give, give one a clean and then move it back again. You know, the, the, the possibilities are kind of endless. Now, Jenny, as you probably know, she's disabled, and so she can't carry a watering can uh, and water her plots. So she relies on tap water uh, and a hose pipe in order to water. And so from her perspective, this is amazing, again, because it means that she can use this water tank uh, rather than tap water. Now, on our site, the long-term strategy is to remove tap water access completely. Uh, apart from at times of drought, uh, and so this is great. It means it's really consistent with that policy. Uh, we can capture a lot more water practically. So I'm going to show you around my plot and Jenny's plot today, uh, and what we're doing, what this what this is going to enable for us. Uh, I'll show you the pump. I'll show you the flow rate, and. Um, yeah, I'd be interested to see whether you're impressed as me. Now, I know that lots of people in the past have shown videos of similar sorts of solutions using uh, sump pumps and 12 volt batteries, solar powered things, all sorts of different options. Um, but well, I just like this because it's so convenient and the fact that it's using a small rechargeable battery, the same sort of battery that you might have on your power tools, for example, um, just, you know, just makes it really great. Uh, I'm really impressed with it. It's pretty expensive, uh, but when you set it in context of harvest value, maybe it's not so expensive. Basically, it's about the cost of it. I think it's about £130, something like that, with the batteries and the charger, um, which is about what we're going to harvest today. So, um, so it's not, you know, it's not too extreme uh, if you harvest in the sort of volumes that we do. Uh, and obviously, if you love your gardening, then you know money isn't the issue really. You know, it's the passion for for growing and the quality of the food and all that sort of thing, and the taste. Um, so the other thing is that we also discussed their long-term plans, uh, and you know, there's no products around this at the moment, but they are looking at taking the same basic concept, pump, pump and rechargeable battery concept, um, but adding into that um, automated uh, valves. Uh, so you can switch the pump on at particular times of day and water particular zones for a certain amount of time and then switch to other zones and things like that. Now, that's going to be amazing if they do that um, because, you know, that's just perfect for water in a polytunnel, for example, uh, or you know, on Jenny's plot where we could use drip to water squash plants 
and brassica plants and things like that, it would be amazing. We would only have to run uh, three drip lines on each bed um, and we've only got two zones that we would need to water in that way. So just a dual zone timer pump with a rechargeable battery, etc., would be really great. And then the final thing is, with this re rechargeable battery solution, obviously you can just take it home with you. So if you're on a plot where there's no, where the security isn't that great, um, and just let's face it, that's pretty much every plot in the country, um, then uh, yeah, you, you know, you're not leaving it outside uh, and, and or having to lock it up or anything like that. You just uh, pop it in a bucket like I do and take it home. So let's go on and I'll show you what we're doing. So I'll just quickly show you the polytunnel and how it would work with drip in here. So basically in summer we just have two drip lines, one down that side for the tomatoes and then one down this side for the peppers. So that would be really simple. So that would just be um, two zones. And then on this side in the polytunnel, uh, basically we just have peppers underneath this trestle table. So again, that would be another zone. So three zones and we probably get away with two zones uh, if we had to in the polytunnel. So that would be amazing. And obviously in winter, we wouldn't rely on that because there's no, uh, there's no need to water <coughs> frequently in winter, but in summer, that would just be amazing. Of course, the icing on the cake would be if we could have uh, a spray to water this grow branch when we've got uh, it full in summer and early autumn. That would really help. On my plot, I've got this little shed here and I've got the big polytunnel. The polytunnel's got gutters on both sides. And so I can collect water into these, uh, into this container here and that overflows into that container there. And then that overflows into that barrel there, which overflows into this dip tank here. But this tank here doesn't have any water supply. So it would be trivially easy for me to just drop the pump in here and pump water into this one to fill it up. So that would be great. And this gutter runs into this dip tank here, which overflows into this one here, which overflows into this one here. So that's fine. No water management needed there. But these two IBC tanks are freestanding. So at the moment, I have to sort of play around with um, connecting the bottom of the dip tanks to the bottom of the IBC tanks and let the water pressure just level those up and then mess around with other mechanisms, basically, that are very inconvenient to fill these dip tanks up. Now, sorry, those IBC tanks up. But again, with this pump, it's going to be trivially easy. Just drop the, dip, drop the pump into one of the dip tanks and I can just fill it straight away. So that's going to be amazing. And obviously getting water out of here, I can just let it siphon, level up by connecting this IBC tank to this dip tank. But the flow rate is incredibly slow. So it basically can't keep up with watering. But again, I could just pump water from the IBC tank into here or water directly with a hose. And the flow rate is about, well, it's over 10 litres a minute for such a short distance, um, which is basically a watering can a, bit, a minute, which is about the rate that uh, I'm watering on this plot when you factor in all the uh, walking that's involved. I've got about five cubic metres of water on my plot stored. Uh, if you include all of the extra little water tanks and things that I've got scattered around, all of which would uh, benefit from being filled with a pump. Um, but I need much more than that to water my plot all the way through um, summer. And so I've got this spot here, which is where I dump stuff. And that's space there to put two IBC tanks stacked on top of each other. And got, obviously there's no way to fill those. So again, using this pump, it would be trivially easy to fill the IBC tanks next to the polytunnel and then just pump from those once they're full into these tanks behind me and uh, yeah maybe might even fully solve the water problem on my plot. So on Jenny's plot we rely on this little shed uh, which has a decent size for capturing water and over winter that can capture about three and a half cubic meters of water but we've actually only got really um, 400 uh, litres of water capture. So there's a massive potential to capture more water here 
And the beauty of Jenny's plot is that we only really need water from June through to um, sept early September. So really only for the three months of summer, just because of the way it's planted, which means that we can capture water for the remaining months. So there's actually quite a lot, as I said, of water capture potential, even from such a small shed. But it was where to put the water. Because we use this patio as a leisure space and uh, you know that's pretty important for Jenny and her little boy and everything to be able to come down here and sit and play here. So we can't store any more water here than we've got at the moment. To pump we could put IBC tanks between these little trees and that would be really convenient. We've got another spot here where you know, pruning the trees appropriately, there's easily enough space for another IBC tank. We just move that little tree there. And then over in that corner, we've got another spot. So that would be brilliant. So I just store the pump and all its associated paraphernalia in this bucket. And here's the pump. And uh, it's got on off switch here, a little timer, so you can leave it unattended for five, 10 or 15 minutes, and then it just switches off. If the um, if it runs dry, then it will also switch off automatically. Uh, and the battery fits inside this little cowl in here, uh, and that pushes down and closes it and waterproofs it. You can hook it permanently onto things, or with this bracket, oops, with that bracket. Uh, but I wouldn't do that because obviously there's so many different places that we would want to use ours. Uh, or you can just temporarily clip it onto things with this one. But to be honest, just store it in this bucket seems perfectly fine to me. So I just started the harvest. It's only taken me about uh, I don't know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes to do that. And in that time, I pretty much emptied this uh, 350 litre uh, water tank. And you can just hear, it's not very loud. And it's just an ordinary, like, like a little sump pump that you might use on a boat or something like that. Uh, really quick and easy. You can see the rate the water's going down, probably, if you're paying really close attention. But I'll show you the flow rate in a minute because it's really impressive. <laughs> I'm easily impressed, obviously. So here's the actual pump. And as you can see, it's just got this little screw-off cap here where, with a filter. Um, and you can see the filter there. And so that's pretty good. And then a standard Ziploc, um, not Ziploc, hose lock connector here, uh, which is really convenient because it means you can connect your own hose if you want to. Uh, but this one's nice because the way that it's got this little hook on it, so you can hook it on the side of containers and things, uh, which is also pretty good. This tank is now empty and the battery's flat. So basically a battery will empty 350 uh, litres at a time, although you can get uh, a larger battery, but I've got two batteries, so that's no hassle for me. And uh, so I'm going to empty this tank now. So as you can probably hear, it's quite a good rate flow rate coming out of there. I'll just uh, take it out and so you can see what it's like. So there you go. I'm pretty impressed with that. That is uh, really uh, practical as a way to water with the pump. As I say, it's about 10 litres a minute, the flow rate. Uh, on a 25 metre hose. So in the time it took to do the harvest, I've emptied this water storage water butt, that one, and that one, which is about uh, 700 litres in total. And so they're all ready to capture this week's rain. So this is by no means the only way to move water around the plot or water in an automated fashion. But I've got to say it's the most convenient and versatile way that I've seen and uh, it's certainly a lot easier than I've been doing before. Uh, and I, I like the speed of it as well. I think that um, you know whilst there are lots of ways to move water just through air pressure and gravity basically um, you know it's slow by comparison with pumps and so I'm all for convenience so I, I'm really looking forward to using it and you know there's no way that we can capture enough water um, even with all you know the polytunnel and the shed and capturing every square inch of water that falls on the roofs of everything to last us all the way through summer but it's it makes a big impact and um, so it's nice to do 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this quick video and I'll see you soon.